Well, we got first window in on the port side forward. We're gonna let the, the glazing silicone cure up before we start fooling with trying to clean it. But uh, pretty excited, works pretty good. Real smooth. So we're gonna take this one out now and put the rubber seal on it and then silicone around the edge and put it up. So you can see it's got slight tint to it. Just a little bit of a gray. That'll be nice on the sunny days. So we've got the uh, three forward windows in. Crawl up my ladder. Should have got up here first, I guess. Don't mind the uh, smokestack. That's just for ventilation when I'm working in there. Three forward windows, the two on the side. Way down yonder is the dab that's sticking out. I'm leaving those two windows on the port side. Getting down the ladder the, on the starboard side, excuse me, I'm leaving those out. But got the uh, davit hung up there, and of course, which is a good thing, a good feeling, you got all the scaffold out of here. That makes it nice and roomy to get in and out. I just have a couple fuel, um, my diesel fill and my water fill way up forward by that cleat and a couple of vents on that side and so everything else will be excess accessed from the uh the bridge over the river Kwai scaffolding project so i can get up and down there work my way around i got the little window in and that's just above where the uh, stove is and it's a slider so we got the uh, ventilation so I was working, uh, just finished up the jam for the head doorway, put it all together and welded it out and cleaned it up. I'm going to drill the holes tomorrow and make the mounting parts. So get the uh, big old trash can down. And so this is a radar arch. The forward LED lights, of course. Then I have a, a spot, and then that's a flood, and that's on each side. And then I have my terminal strips inside, so I'll wire everything up before I put it way up on top of the house. That way, then all I do is just bring my wiring up through the bottom. And it pins and rotates down in place. Waiting on paint, waiting on the Zolotone paint still. But the windows came in from a company in Seattle called Sea Clear. So, um, yeah, Sea Clear in Seattle built the windows. So what you're looking at here is you see a couple wires in there. And you see on the sides, there's one side of the conductive path and there's one on the other side. So this takes 120 volt. The film is laminated between the glass. So I had to get a separate um, inverter so that it just runs these. It takes 200 watts per window which isn't much, but in the morning, you'll be able to flip these on and they'll be clear within a few minutes. The center one's not. I'm just going to put what they call demist, which is a laminate or like a decal, and you apply it just like a decal on the inside. 
<clears throat> it's about a eight, 10 mil thick plastic, but it stops 80% of the sweat. I just wanted these, say if we're out and we're deer hunting and it's 20 degrees out in Prince William Sound and we lose heat, I want my windows, that's my backup, backup in order so I can see out of these things. That'll give us two windows, turn the electric on and you're good to go. Now the, the windows, and this is a one that I was saying, So you can see the little emblem. See clear. I hope that turned out. So the uh, owner, Scott, um, great guy to deal with there in Seattle. Uh, I'm telling you, he, you know, very easy to deal with. The, the whole group uh, helped me through this and uh, crated them up, boxed them. Uh, they got here. You know, they were here in no time because Carlisle Shipping comes right down the road from my house, my shop. But um, anyway, pretty happy with it. A slight 10, as you can see. Um, big windows. This window here is absolutely going to be peachy. People can sit right here. This is going to be like a, a freaking tour boat going out there in the sound. And um, That's a great window. I'm so glad I put that window and made it so big. Uh, it turned out nice. So just like I said, waiting on my Zolotone back here so I can squirt the rest of this, then clear coat, I'd be happy. <clears throat> so I thought I'd show uh, what I was doing for my uh, gaff holder, my harpoon, miscellaneous, whatever in the boat. This goes underneath the gunnels. So I'm just milling this out of one inch. It'll get cut along the back for quarter inch because that's my support in the wall that'll go through and then it'll bolt see the two bolt holes recess but I'm just taking stock just flat stock and put it on the the uh, bandsaw <clears throat> and uh, you know whittled away and made a template first made it out of paper then traced it on the plastic to get a good mark and then made it out of quarter inch aluminum in there so another template left over pieces and then just take the router and uh, just use a straight router bit and I use the quarter inch aluminum as my guide on the back side and that gave me the pretty smooth fairly smooth once you get it in there and then get all the edges routed because that's what I'm doing now I'm just putting the bull nose so I've done most of it now. I had to turn it around to get the rest of it. So that'll be for my goodies to hang on in the back poop deck. So I shot the rest of the Zolotone and I got the clear coat on. Trying to get it so it's light in here, maybe. So this will dry out and uh, I'm ready to start putting parts and pieces in. So I've been spending, I spent about three hours, maybe a little more. I'm up to about midway 
Uh, this is the starboard side. So I've been 80 grit orbital and sanding down the weld spots. You can see there's a weld vertical. And uh, the only way to really see them now is that here's one here. So I'll probably touch that one a little more. But anyway, after this, this gets into the quarter inch down here. Because that's quarter inch up to here. Anyway, I'm I'm to right here, and after this stage, it's uh, acid etch, and then uh, start priming painting. So I bought a product, this Evercoat filler, and it's supposed to be an aluminum, non-corrosive product. I got to go research it some more. Um, I know they build, they make good stuff, but I wanted to fill this seam in. This is the only seam on this side, and uh, because, like I say, this is the quarter inch. From here down all the way is quarter inch to the other side. From here, from here up is a three sixteenths. You can see the step up there. That's the deck. So deck height down is all a quarter inch. That's the rub rail. That gets that. UMHW, I'll router it. I got two 12, 12 foot pieces for each side. I'll router it, I'll sculpt it to that curve, that point up here, <clears throat> and I'll drive those on, and that'll be finished, and they're black. And that's so when we come into the dock, we can just lay against the dock on this here. That's our sacrificial rub rail, six inches, and that's kind of the sweet spot, I think, for all the docks when we pull up so that way we can just lay against the dock tie off then we can figure out what we're doing get a buoys or whatever and throw later so i got the whole starboard side sanded down fared weld marks have been touched you can see that would be a weld mark actually and then down here, I had this uh, Evercoat filler, and it's with aluminum. So I filled in, I haven't sanded up here yet, but this was, this is deck line here. So that's deck line. So from here down and around to the other side is all quarter inch. So you don't get the weld through as much. There's a little touch there that I just hit <clears throat> but this was a seam of the sheets of 3 16 So it's welded, and then I have it vertical, um, horizontal, latticed in there behind it, welded every four inches in between struts, ribs, I mean. So anyway, this was the weld here, and pretty hard to make that seam to zero out. So I filled it with this aluminum Evercoat. It's metal to metal, it's called. It's a two part. And it, you know, it fares out just like auto body. And uh, so very smooth. Um, from everything we could resolve, it looks like it should be long lasting. It's above waterline, waterline's down there. <clears throat> so it isn't gonna soak up salt waters as much. It's going to be coated, of course, with primer and then a top coat. So these will be rubbed out like you can see I rubbed them out, but they're going to be taped from here up to here, or taped from here to here, from here to here. So the aluminum is going to be raw, and I'm going to paint from this rail all the way up to it. That'll be the lighter gray in there. You can see, of course, another shot of the silver uh, Zola tone done. So, yeah, I'm going to get ready to spray. The other side needs a little cleanup. It's not bad, but uh, I'm going to have to get some hand because I got to move all the scaffold off of it. I got to have at least. 
five foot of scaffold and I don't want to tear it down because I want to keep it there until I'm done working. Because <clears throat> I got windows up there still out. And that's where I have to put the fridge through and uh, the stove can go through the doorway, but it's right there. And, uh, but I'm gonna get that side ready. That'll take me a oh, day, day and a half, let's say two. Then acid etch, blow it off, tape it. So, uh, and there's that uh, material, the Evercoat, metal to metal. So I put my custom uh, spear gaff miscellaneous holders on, got my uh, foot steps on finally. That was nice to have back so we can step up. Same thing on that side. So they just, I routed them out to go on that quarter inch rib and then uh, quarter twenties with inset heads but uh those are built out of that one inch umhw so i'll put a a bungee strap on the, those also to hold stuff so they don't kick off but anyway just had to show that a little bling